Hello everyone, my name is Dante Aleman and I'm from OctoberPanicAttack.com and I'm here to talk to you about tonight, Penhurst Haunted Asylum. Our group just went the last night of September, uh, September 30th, Friday night, uh, slightly rainy night and um, there's going to be a lot of rain I have a feeling this month and we went as a group, we had a pretty large group, we had 10 people all together including myself and this is an attraction, it's in its second year and this is an attraction that we did not go to last year uh, precisely because we didn't want to. Um, all I heard were a lot of mixed reviews about it and a lot of negative reviews. Uh, to be to be quite honest with you, a lot of the reviews I was hearing last year and, and its first year was, you know, the lines were obscenely long, it was expensive, and you were only in it for 15 minutes. Um, you were waiting in line for so long and then it was only 15 minutes and it... Um, it it, it wasn't so hot, you know, they were hurting you through like cattle and all these different things. And, and so we made a decision last year not to go. Um, a couple of, 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 of uh, our group did go, you know, by themselves and, uh, you know, came back and said they really didn't like it that much. It was a bad experience. It was, it's overcrowded, you know, so on and so forth. And um, <clears throat> through a series of rain dates and things like that for this year and by going onto the website and realizing that they added um, some more haunts this year, I said, you know what, I have a feeling that something has drastically changed with this place, and I think that it's going to really be worth going to. I just had this like vibe, this feeling that uh, maybe, we should, maybe we should do this now. Um, the website was saying now that they added uh, two new attractions, and they even changed the existing attractions, which... Um, which, you know, all together would bring you to one, two, three, four, I'm looking at the website right now, four attractions, the Penhurst Asylum, the Dungeon of Lost Souls, the Ghost Hunt, and Tunnel Terror. Uh, last year they had the tunnel, and I believe they had the Dungeon of Lost Souls as well, and I think that was it last year. So they added the Ghost Hunt, and they added um, the, uh, the Penhurst Asylum, um, and did some new things with the Tunnel of Terror. The Tunnel Terror, and I could be wrong on a couple of those things, but they added two haunts for this year. I, I really have to tell you as a, as, a, as a beginning summary here that I was completely blown away by this attraction, folks. Um, you might have mixed reviews about this place, thinking that it might be overly commercial, or might even be offended by the, 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 them having a haunted attraction at this place, as there were a lot of protests last year about this. Um, or you might think that it's overpriced at $40, but really it's $35 if you go on 13haunts.com and get the $5 off coupon. Um, you might just think that you've heard it's not scary, um, you know, it's just for money or, or whatever you might have heard. Um, I will tell you, I was completely blown away by this place on every level. Um, I'm going to start off by telling you that I don't remember the last time I was this scared panicky and anxiety ridden okay um, I was married in a haunted house uh, three years ago <laughs> I've been going to haunted houses my whole life uh, my wife and I travel as far as Canada to go to haunted houses um, and some very extreme ones at that uh, but this one mortified me uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna break down a couple little points for you that will maybe help you out um, first off Depending on the way you drive into this place, there are two ways to drive in, I, I believe. Um, one of the ways is pretty spooky, and the other way feels like you're driving into the pit of hell. It looks like you're driving onto the set of the Blair Witch Project. Looks like you're driving off-road, no street lights whatsoever. Um, if your car broke down, you feel like you'd be in the middle of nowhere. Our group was questioning if we were actually going in the right direction, if we were actually approaching Penhurst Haunted Asylum. I mean, we looked like we were going further and further and further into darkness, into wooded darkness, which freaks me out a lot. Thank God for our GPS, however, because our GPS was telling us that we were going in the right direction, albeit the right direction was another two miles or something, mile, and it was... Rugged terrain, rough and very, very scary. We turned the music off in a, in the van for for that drive and just took in what we were witnessing. 
which was quite possibly the best entrance I've ever seen to an attraction. They didn't have to do anything to it. It's just what it is. It's spooky and creepy and nightmarish. Once we got in, we finally found the parking, which was a little bit tricky to find, but we found it. And once, what we realized was that was only the beginning. Because once we parked our cars, we went on foot in those same type of wooded areas to get to the actual asylum. I mean, we were walking for quite a bit. As a group, we were freaked out. And there were random people standing in the darkness directing us every so often. But it was dark. I mean, at one point, somebody in our group said, while we were walking, okay, I got my money's worth already and I didn't even pay yet or start the attraction. I mean, hands down, the best entrance to a haunted attraction I've ever seen. Okay? Hands down. It, it'll break the hardest person to at least make you think for a second, what in the world am I going to be doing tonight? Once you get to the asylum, the buildings are very, very freaky. If you think Eastern State Penitentiary looks freaky, you know, I'm sorry, folks, and I, and I like Eastern State Penitentiary, and they do some really awesome things, but this place is a hundred million times freakier than East, freakier looking and so much more intimidating than Eastern State Penitentiary. Um, you, you just walk up to it and you're like, there should not be a haunted attraction here at all. We had a great group of people, and um, we started off, um, there were no lines, really. It, it, you know, it was, it, it was uh, the last uh, Friday in September, but I hear the lines get vicious, so you really want to get there as early as possible. And they do open pretty, pretty early. Um, we started uh, with a dungeon of lost souls. And um, for those people who thought that it was uh, offensive that they were, you know, that they, that they might be using um, some themes from the actual place, well, they do. The whole thing is filled with themes of um, mental disorders, handicaps, um, mental sickness. The whole thing is pervaded with that on a much deeper and disturbing level. Much more than I was expecting, to be quite honest with you. It was very disturbing. We started off with the Dungeon of Lost Souls. And I can see how it could be offensive to some people. The Dungeon of Lost Souls um, was very, very, uh, you know, very interesting set design. The boiler room was even hot. Uh, we were sweating. And it, the actors were crazy. Very, very crazy. But not in the typical crazy way in your face. They were, um, they were like a controlled crazy. And typically, you'll see actors that are crazy, and all of them are exactly the same. They're all crazy, which is awesome. You know, they're all in your face and brutal. But this one, every character was different in a way. And um, Penhurst Asylum grabs you, touches you, and even in one case, licked somebody's face. Hands down, no other haunted attraction that we're aware of at this point touches you as much as Penhurst Haunted Asylum. Is it legal? I don't know. I don't care. But it rocks. If you don't want to be touched, people, I'm not even joking around with you. Don't go. Uh, the manager, one of the, the people that worked there, told us that somebody said, "Please do not touch us. You know, I'm pregnant. I don't want to be touched." They doubled and tripled their touching, and that's the girl that got her face licked. Anyway, the Dungeon of Lost Souls, um, very disturbing imagery. Um, and, and, and kind of designs of each room. And one of the things our group said was that unlike um, another haunt of the asylum, uh, asylum themes like Eastern State and things like that, Penhurst doesn't develop it, overdevelop it too much. They use the actual decrepit rooms and decrepit grounds. They're using the actual place. They're not trying to add too much more to it. I mean, it's freaky in and of itself, people. So, but, but they have they have props and they have things like that. And it's probably hands down some of the best <laughs> use of animatronics that I've seen in, in, in an extremely long time because typically animatronics don't scare me that much, but they're cool to look at and nostalgic. But these animatronics were very, very well placed and very, very well done and scary. The Dungeon of Lost Souls um, was the first one and it, it you know, it was good. It was really good. It, it, it wasn't, um, we weren't terrified. We weren't, we weren't like overly scared, but we were very impressed by the disturbing nature of, of, of the pieces of the rooms and, and things like that. <clears throat> and from there, this is going to be a little bit longer of a review, but you got to bear with me here, okay? From there, um, we, uh, we went to 
We started with the Dungeon of Lost Souls, and then we went to the Penhurst Asylum attraction. You know, there's actually an attraction called the Asylum. This thing um, started off feeling like you were in a museum, and then went into pure chaotic hell, involving a real reptile and a woman giving birth to a baby. The Penhurst Asylum scared the crap out of me and my group. Wide open rooms, actors, they do this thing where they get your attention in one place and then they brutalize you behind you or to the left of you. Perfect number of actors. This, the way they coordinated these horrible looking rooms with people terrorizing you above you in the ceiling, people coming out of the floor, people coming out of the walls. I mean, we're talking people in the ceiling, people in the floor, people in the walls. I mean, this was unbelievable. It was, I mean, they were coming from every direction. And, and I remember that some of the rooms in the asylum, their use of strobe lights were unbelievable to really disorient you and to terrorize you. You did not want to look at these actors and you didn't want to look at what the next room had in store. And the hallways were so creepy because they were real. Um, the asylum was fantastic. Some of the loudest noises I've heard in a haunted house in a very, very long time. I had to put my fingers in my ears. And the, once again, the sets and the situations like this very disturbing lobotomy were very, very disturbing. This was very disturbing stuff. I mean, I would almost say that it wasn't really kid-friendly that at all, but it was so well done. And when we got out of there, I could have been content with my 35 bucks right there. The, the Penhurst Asylum kicked my butt. I don't want to say too much more about it, but the mix of the beginning, which wasn't scary, and then the shift to total chaotic horror and terror was amazing. Each room got more and more wicked. <clears throat> we decided to take a break and to, to eat a little bit because the lines were pretty short. I've never seen ribs at a haunted attraction before. I've never seen um, jerk chicken at a haunted attraction before. This, they have jerk chicken, uh, pulled pork, ribs um, with a humongous grill. And it was awesome. The food was so good. Some of the best food I've had in a haunted attraction. Hands down. I mean, I just told you those things. Have you ever seen them in a haunted attraction before? I haven't. Um, the prices for the sandwiches were about $8 or $9. So it, it seems like pretty high. But for what you're getting, just bring 10 bucks for food and get a sandwich and get a drink if you want. You know, they have soft pretzels there too and stuff like that. But the food was so awesome. And they have the best bonfires ever. I mean, right in the middle, you're, you're at the bonfire, you're with the food, there's a merchandise tent, and but surrounding you is the entire asylum, or school, as it really originally was, which is so creepy to, to have a, bon, to a couple bonfires and then looking around you and you're miss a real bizarre structure that involves some pain and torture for some people. <clears throat> the food was amazing, and then from there we went to... Their other, their other new attraction this year, which was Ghost Hunt. And I don't want to say too much about Ghost Hunt because I want it to be able to, you know, something that you can experience. And, uh, um, and this is getting long, so I, you know, I don't know how, how patient you are. But a Ghost Hunt did something that I've never seen a haunted attraction do before. They let you loose. Our group had 10 people and they gave us one flashlight. They let us loose in a piece of Penhurst in a building that was supposedly the most haunted. Um, paranormal investigators have been there, so on and so forth. <clears throat> and they let us loose in there to see if we could see any paranormal activity. And there were lots of other people running around and we were in complete darkness pretty much in very, in rooms that have not been touched by the staff. You know, they are what they are. And as one story goes from somebody who works there, a construction worker was working there a couple weeks ago and ran out and left his tools and never came back. Um, somebody I know went last weekend and bailed. Um, this is unlike anything you've ever experienced before. You might not think it's anything. Um, it creeped me out in a very profound manner and somebody in our group actually said, you know what, I like haunted houses, I love haunted houses, but I don't like the real stuff. And this was almost like a branching into the real stuff. 
meaning ghost hunting. Is it unique? Completely. Um, because I've never seen somebody allow you to do that. And I was walking in a place that I wouldn't walk in in my worst nightmares. Okay? <clears throat> I, I made it out of there and I started to panic in the, in the last 10 minutes of it. And um, that led us to the last attraction, Tunnel Terror. And um, I got to be honest, at this point, I, I was ready to bail because I was so kind of uh, impacted in a very profound way that I was getting very panicky and just really spooked out by uh, what we've done so far this night. And the fact that all of this is like real, you know, that I, I really didn't know if I could do this. And I heard that Tunnel Terror was, you know, pretty intense for some people and that they did a lot of new things this year. <clears throat> I don't want to give away too much with this thing either, but I'm, I'm going to say this to you. Tunnel Terror was quite possibly one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Um, you're traveling in tunnels underneath of Penhurst uh, that are real and, and they've been there for years. This place closed down in 1986, so, you know. Um, there's horrible graffitis on the, on, uh, graffitis, yeah. There's horrible graffiti on the walls in this tunnel, but there's horrible graffiti everywhere. Um, so if you have small children and you don't want them to see, like, fuck you written on a wall or I hate God or, you know, I mean, the, 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 you don't know who's been in these buildings, but it doesn't look like they've done much to them. They've painted over some of the stuff, but a lot of the stuff is still there. And we were waiting in line to get in the Tunnel Terror, and right around the wall was like, fuck you, on, you know, and, and graffiti. So this is a very, it just adds to the disturbing nature of this place. It's not manufactured. You know, this is a place that's just just inherently disturbing. Um, <clears throat> and um, Tunnel Terror, I'm going to tell you that in the first five minutes, I almost wanted to leave because I was terrified, and I was having a panic attack, and I was having anxiety. And pretty much it was everything that I paid for for $35. Um, <clears throat> it's long. It's very long. And once you get in there, it doesn't seem like you can get out, um, even though there are some random exit signs. I don't want to say too much about Tunnel Terror except for what I already said, which should be enough. You know, um, It's my opinion. One of the scariest things I've ever experienced. It felt like I went into hell. And uh, it was my worst nightmare, and I was walking in it. Uh, I'm going to tell you that um, if you're claustrophobic, uh, if you have fear of, of, uh, of darkness, if you um, get dizzy easily, if you have asthma, um, <clears throat> this is not the place for you at all. Um, and I suffer from those things, and I still did it, barely. And uh, it's very rare when you come out of a haunted attraction and you like are ready to kiss the ground. Um, and when I got out of Tunnel Terror, I knelt down on the, on the gravel and just, I made it. Um, I don't want to say too much about it, but it's terrifying and it's totally original and unique and it's your worst nightmare. Um, and it's pretty... This whole place is working off of very, very creepy scenarios, and I, that's all I want to say. And the actors don't let up on you at all, and they're going to be very creative with what they do. Um, all that said, I suggest you go to Penhurst Asylum, and I suggest you go to 13haunts.com, get the $5 off coupon, and pay $35 for it, because we spent, um, we were there from, I believe, 7.45 to about... Uh, 11 o'clock at night or 10.30 completely worth every penny of that $35 um, if you only go to one haunted attraction this year and we haven't been to all the rest this year is just starting let's say you only have 40 bucks so far I'm going to tell you that you probably should go to Penhurst Asylum with that $40 okay I'm going to tell you that right now um, if, what if you told me I don't have a lot of money what should I do? I'd say do Tunnel Terror. But I would tell you, quite possibly, Tunnel Terror would probably be good if you did the other ones first. Um, the order we did it in, uh, I suggest this order. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the order because like a good horror movie, 
you can't just fast forward to the last hour and start to watch it and say, oh, this isn't scary. You need the whole build up. So I suggest you don't buy just one attraction. I suggest because there were some people there tonight who were doing that. I think you should start with um, the Dungeon of Lost Souls and then do Penhurst Asylum and then maybe take a break and get some food like we did and then do Ghost Hunt and then end with Tunnel Terror. And that's all I'm going to say. Penhurst, I bought a t-shirt from you guys tonight. I thought you guys were unbelievable. I don't even know if you're going to watch this video because you guys are humongous, but I suggest that people go. Our group loved it and I absolutely loved it. It terrified me, and that's exactly what you're looking for, right? All right. Have a good night, everybody. Until our next review, and uh, thanks for, uh, for listening to this 20-minute spiel. <laughs>